Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Jordan International School. My name is Amnia Malik and I am Hannah Hamza and we are delighted to host the celebration of achievements. We are gathered here today to celebrate the achievements in and outside of the classroom of our fellow students. These achievements are a result of students' hard work and their discipline, but also of their positive character and willingness to contribute to our community. All achievements symbolize our school's motto, achieving excellence, and act as evidence of students truly embracing the motto. As the award recipients are joined here today by their loved ones, this event also recognizes and celebrates the support they have received during their journey. These achievements and awards serve as an inspiration to all of us as they symbolize our school aims, leadership, resilience, integration, thinking, communication, and engagement. Students are leaving their mark and truly are making a positive difference for themselves and others. To make sure this event runs as smoothly as possible, the award winners will be read out in groups, which will be shown on the slideshow. We kindly ask that you refrain from clapping until all the names of the award winners in each group have been read out. You will notice across the evening that a number of award winners are unfortunately unable to be here today. Alternative arrangements have been made to award their prizes. However, we will still read out their names for a round of applause. We sincerely hope that all of you enjoy the celebratory ceremony. And without further ado, we welcome Mr. Sheehan to the stage for the principal's address. Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome. Good afternoon, to, uh, and welcome to the uh, Upper Years Celebration of Achievement. Now, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you all here. Um, I will just make reference briefly, because some of you and we were all expecting um, a VVIP visit this afternoon. Unfortunately, their majesties are unable to make our event, uh, but we're continuing to uh, carry on with the event and, and uh, celebrate everyone's successes this afternoon. Now, we're gathered here to celebrate the hard work and dedication of a number of our upper year students. Throughout the year, these students have demonstrated exceptional achievement across the year and effort as well. And that's not just in the curriculum, but also in our co-curricular program and our enrichment program as well. All of the students in this room, whether they're getting an award or not, are celebrated throughout our school year for their perseverance and for their dedication. And that can't happen without lots of people supporting them on their journey. Obviously, we're celebrating out, uh, uh, outstanding academic achievement, but also we're celebrating lead leadership and an unwavering spirit of engagement throughout the school year. Students here celebrated have taken on various roles and responsibilities from our school leadership programs to the student council, and they foster a positive and inclusive environment that really is accessible to all. All of the students have shown willingness to collaborate and work harmoniously with their peers, and I think that's really important when we're creating a community within our school. As we acknowledge the accomplishments of all of our students, we must recognise the different contributions that people have made. Firstly, colleagues. Their tireless efforts, passion, enthusiasm have guided and supported and challenged the students throughout the year. The commitment of teachers and non-teaching staff to fostering a nurturing and stimulating learning environment has empowered all of our students to reach new heights of success. None of this would be possible without parents. We have a partnership with parents and without your support and your guidance we would not be able to do what we do. Fundamentally every success that we celebrate whether the, ch whether the children are on this stage today or not is built on a solid partnership of parental engagement and parental support. So thank you very much to the parents. In fact, please can we give a round of applause to the parents in the room. Without the staff, without the parents, we would not be able to support the children on their educational journey. But I will say my last congratulations and thanks to our upper year students who are celebrating with these awards today. Your hard work and passion and dedication are to be celebrated. We celebrate your achievements. And as we embark on your journey, and for some of you, you are in year 10, and for some of you, you are in year 12, as we embark on the next stages of your journey, getting recognition today hopefully will build a platform for you to be successful in year 11 or in year 12 or ultimately in year 13. 
So a huge congratulations from me to our exceptional students on the stage and in the audience. And thank you so much to all of you who have contributed to their success. Let's enjoy an afternoon of celebration and we look forward to everyone's bright futures. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Sheehan, for that heartfelt speech. We are grateful to have such an inspirational figure, such as yourself, as our principal. Please, can we have one more round of applause for Mr. Sheehan? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a great aspect of school life revolves around the memories we are able to make during these times, as is the events that highlight our school year that will stay with us even years after leaving. We are now welcoming Grace Lee and Toby Stevens to present a speech regarding the memories that we create together at school. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Toby. And my name is Grace. And we'd like to take a moment to talk about some of the memories we've been able to make throughout this year. I think it's fair to say that the 2022-23 academic year has been a great one. It was our first normal year back without any COVID interruptions, and everyone has made the most of it through organizing and participating in so many events. One opportunity that 99 Year 10 students took part in this year was the DOV International Bronze Award. The long hikes over the three weekends were definitely challenging, and the food may have been questionable at times, but the experience was definitely worth it when we were able to relax with friends by the campfire and just enjoy being outdoors. As a Year 10 student, I've had the pleasure of enjoying our year group socials, which have included some fantastic activities. A personal favourite of mine was the slip and slide we had during Term 2. Loads of people got involved, and I'm afraid the slide didn't survive, but it was good fun. We also have another upcoming social in Week 11, which I'm sure will be a nice way to end the year. It goes without saying that a tough part of being in your IGCSE years is the work, along with sitting the all-too-frequent exams. But the school events such as Peace Week and Earth Week have certainly lightened the load and included everyone, whether it's been running stools, dressing up, or performing. To my fellow Year 12s, we are told that the choices we make within these two years set the trajectory for the rest of our lives. This, I feel, has been the toughest part of the year. The promising future sometimes feels daunting. But luckily, we are a strong bunch and a supportive community and our laughs have always been louder than the occasional cry. The highlights of the year are the things we have done together. Our first ever social around the campfire, where we greeted the new people that have now become our closest friends. The year 12 netball match, where we viciously cheered each other on, or plugged in the park, where the year 12 council had worked weeks so that everyone could relax on the field and listen to some amazing musical talents. As we are now approaching the next phase, year 13, the pressure may be building, but I want each and every one of you to know that you are not alone. We are all going to have failures, but they will allow us to grow and will make the wins even more rewarding. To the year 10s and the year 11s, I'm going to give a piece of advice that I've given countless others. Slow down. Take this long holiday ahead of you to do things that you want to do, not something that someone else has forced you to do. Every single student in this auditorium right now has amazing attributes. The extended holiday isn't the time to pressure yourself to try and be more. Instead, use this time to broaden your skills outside of school, whether that is in arts, music, literature, or sports. Any hobbies that allow you to learn more about who you are outside of school. I think there's a lot to be proud of when we look back through the year and lots of memories that have been made thanks to the hard work put in by numerous students to organize these events. I personally have really appreciated the opportunity to work with the Year 10 Council and I know that everyone has contributed to making this year better. We would like to recognize and thank all of our Council teams who have brought our year groups together. We have been able to create shared experiences and memories because of their contributions and leadership. We would like to particularly highlight two people from each council group for their inspiring leadership throughout the year. Just a quick reminder before we do, uh, the award winners will be read out in groups, which will be shown on the slideshow. 
We kindly ask that you refrain from clapping until all the names of the award winners in each group have been read out. So, the leadership awards presented by Dr. Milner go to Sai Ananya, Adrian Quintero in absentia, Hannah Hamza, Alia Rudy, Zed Smith, and Chloe Shim. As we all know, leadership refers to the action of leading a group of people, and great leadership results in the success of the group to its fruitful destination. But besides being able to lead the community, we have individuals, students, who possess the amazing ability to connect with their peers and to be the glue of their community, whether it be checking up on others, proudly being themselves whilst embracing and celebrating diversity, being inclusive of others, or by delivering inspirational speeches. These students have genuinely placed their mark in the community by acting as beacons of positivity and inspiration. They allow their positive light to shine on the others around them, binding the community closer together. Without these people, our close-knit community would not be as colorful and enjoyable. So without further ado, we would like to introduce the Russell Mann Award, presented by Dr. Milner, to cherish and celebrate these students. The Russell Mann Award to go to... Shovik Bandyopadye, Mariam Dawood in absentia, Sakina Aslan, Taufik Fahmi, Jamila Johnny, and Shu'if Shaikhful Ihsan. <laughs> to all of our guests, we are currently located inside the Arts Center of JIS, one of the amazing facilities we are fortunate enough to have access to as this is where our community can be involved in manifesting our creative outlet. This is especially important as the creativity of our school and its members provides a sense of uniqueness that shines in the heart of Brunei. And with that, we welcome Brianna Lee and Marvin Santos to the stage to talk about the arts at JIS. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marvin. I'm Brianna. And we would like to talk about the role JIS has played in many students' lives, which has allowed so many of us to showcase our true, once-hidden talent. As you all know, JIS offers numerous opportunities which allow these students to display their skills. Just some examples are the, are the yearly musicals, such as Annie, or drama plays, such as Romeo and Juliet, or musical recitals throughout the year. Personally, it is opportunities such as these where I feel like I'm part of a family, who all have the same goal of making performing arts at JIS spectacular. Earlier in February, I was involved in the cast of Romeo and Juliet, and for me, it was a test to step out of my comfort zone, as I never performed in a play before. I am proud, however, to say that I have done it, and although it was hard work, I have no regrets. Performing in JIS, be it through drama or music, felt like stepping into a sacred world full of magic and opportunity. Not just on stage, this magic happened. Making new friends and many special moments backstage with the cast when we supported each other, belong to my most favorite memories. There are some people in Romeo and Juliet 
who I went from barely knowing to talking to every single day now. It's moments like these that completely changed my life, and I would like to thank the Performing Arts Department for everything that they have done for the GIST community and making theirs and others' dreams a reality. Thank you, Brianna. Up until I had arrived at GIST in January 2020, I never had confidence in my own creative side. I had never sang in front of crowds, nor have I ever played guitar and serenaded a group of people. By meeting teachers from different backgrounds at GIST, my confidence in my own abilities started to increase. I started to understand how people viewed things differently, which helped me to improve the way I presented myself. Art was never something I appreciated, as I was more into video games and rather more factual ideals. However, coming across many of the art exhibition shows throughout the year in the foyer, just outside where we are seated right now, I have acquired an appreciation for the hard work and thoughts my peers have put into their art. I have felt inspired and as a result have begun to take playing guitar of higher importance as it is my skill, my hobby, and my art. We hope that you have had a chance to participate in any of the opportunities just has offered. There's so much to gain and so little to lose. Just try it out. If, there's, if not, there is always next year. Thank you. Throughout the school year, GIST provides many activities that students can involve themselves in. Besides the arts, there are many sports activities which students can engage in. GIST has had a great number of successful feats in the sports category as our community becomes ever so more active. To go on further, can we please welcome Shovik Bandyapadye and Zoe Chan to mention some of the highlights of our sport year. Hello everyone, my name is Shobik, and I'm here for our sports achievements and participation. I'm here with Zoe. At GIST, we are lucky to have such a large sports community. So let's mention some of this year's highlights. This year was the first year of Phoenix League, and it was a huge success. The Phoenix League is a fun way to play sports in a competitive tournament and compete against other teams to receive a medal and a trophy for your team's success. We have also had a great year of house sports, again, with almost, if not everyone, participating to some extent to try and bring their house glory and honor. This year, I personally feel that the most important sp sporting and fitness event was Movember. Not only did it encourage the whole school to partake in activities and to get moving, but it also raised awareness of the importance of personal health. As you can see, here at GIST, we have had a lot of athletic opportunities and success. Moving forward as a community, I'm sure that this will only continue and raise the levels even higher. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zoe, and I'm one of the sports captains for 2023 to 2024. This year, sports at GIST has definitely been our best year yet. It's been amazing to see a variety of students not only participate, but also support the events that we've held at GIST. Personally, one of the highlights was our community events like football and netball fun day, as well as the rugby tournament that happened yesterday. It's great to see people enjoying playing these sports, not only with peers from GIS, but also with people from the wider community. These events that GIS organizes truly brings us together. Not to mention, our students have excelled at sports outside of GIS too. For instance, our under-19 and under-16 competitive netball teams had the opportunity to travel to Singapore this year to compete against some really strong teams. It was an incredibly eye-opening experience for everyone involved, and I'm sure opportunities like this will continue to be available to the ever-growing community of athletes at GIS. Could everybody who's participated in some form of sports at GIS this year please stand up? Please give a big round of applause to all of our athletes. Amazing to see that so many students participated in various competitions, games, and events. Speaking of events, in years 10 to 12, students get the opportunity to undergo the Duke of Edinburgh Bronze, Silver, or Gold Award. Now, we would like to invite Tanisha and Adam to talk about their DOE experiences. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Tanisha. And my name is Adam. And today, we're going to talk about our experiences in the Duke of Edinburgh. How many of you in this auditorium have done any level of the Duke of Edinburgh? Wow, so many hands. <laughs> this shows what a large number of our community engaged with this challenging and fun program and are willing to step outside of their comfort zones. This year, I did the Duke of Edinburgh Bronze Award. At first, I was uncertain to join, but now I have no regrets. Through this experience, I managed to learn many helpful life skills, create a stronger bond with my peers, and lastly, overcame many challenges. For me, personally, the most memorable moment in the Bronze Award was cooking with the members in my group and having late night chats, which were very entertaining and funny. We did many fun activities such as the beach cleanup, setting up tents, and even swimming in the waterfalls. However, there were also some challenging moments during this experience, like the 14-kilometer hike in Bukit Bandar and climbing hills whilst carrying a rucksack with all my clothes and equipment in it. Even though it was difficult, I had the support of my group members who helped me all the way through it. This also made me realize how important teamwork is since we needed to work together as a team in order to overcome all those challenges that we faced. It was hard, but also very rewarding. The best thing was when we finally reached our destination and got to finally shower. Thanks, Tunisia. I know how you must have felt when you were walking through the jungle. I have done all bronze, silver, and finishing gold this year. Tomorrow morning, I leave to Bali for my gold expedition, and I am super excited. The Duke of Edinburgh program offers us a unique opportunity to push our boundaries, test our limits, and discover the depth of our capabilities. It encourages us to embrace the challenges both physically and mentally. For me, I remember clearly the scorching hot, never-ending beach walk during bronze, the eight-hour hike getting lost in the thick jungle of Bukit Karamunting during silver, or the thick mud and heavy rain during our training at the Mariuk Farm Stay with Jungle Dave during gold. Although it may seem hard, and I can see the fear on some of your faces, all these challenges were rewarded with, as I see, the best part of the DFE program, which is cooking and enjoying the night with your friends, as the conversations and laughter were worth all the pain and struggles during the day. As I delve into my memories, I'm overwhelmed with a sense of accomplishment and personal growth. To those going to Bali tomorrow or Tumbrong soon after for the final adventurous journey, I wish you good luck and enjoy. We will be making lifelong memories together. Thank you. Wow, that is indeed a wild experience. Other than DFE, the school has also given us countless opportunities to really connect with nature and involve ourselves in our environment. Yes, I agree. And for instance, we've just had our Earth Week, where students got together in reinforcing our community's journey to sustainability. So without further ado, we welcome Sai and Owen to share their insights on this. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sai Ananya. And I'm Owen Kyle. This year, we've accomplished so many achievements with a teaspoons of change on our journey towards sustainability. It shows we are part of the solution. We recently celebrated Earth Week, where each and every one from our community has contributed, whether it was in tree planting, supporting the green businesses, zero waste picnics, and meatless Mondays, to name a few. We also had guest speakers representing different sustainable companies in Brunei and their advice to us about teaspoons of change and what we can do that have an impact really inspired me. We have all done our part. For example, for a qualifying expedition for the Bronze Award, we collected 55 bags of plastic on the beach and are currently working with Reef Check and looking to invest in a small plastic recycler. DOV really helped me to appreciate and connect with nature, even more so due to our busy lives. The three expeditions have taught each of us that we indeed can live without the modern day comforts, example, ACs, fridge, comfy beds, etc. The hikes taught us to minimize waste in our surroundings and help the environment. That's still not the only thing. In our school, we recycle all our used papers into toilet paper, which are locally produced by NEVO, and supply all the bathrooms in our school. 
Moreover, we contribute two dollars, which goes towards rewilding projects across Borneo, including our own ODC and Reef Check. Jis is making a positive difference, and I'm proud of that. How about you, Owen? Yes, I'm extremely proud of what we've achieved this year. And as a sustainability prefect for the upcoming academic year, I'm so happy to hear all these things being done by our students across the senior school. Earth Week was, as you said, a massive success, and we should all feel proud of the progress we made towards the sustainability goals. Adding on to the achievements you mentioned, Sai, here at GIST, our EcoGIST team has been active indeed. Not only have we become one of the top five contributors to Enevo, we've also earned the prestigious Green Flag Award from EcoSchools Global, which can be seen in the Electronic Learning Center in our block. Our fundraising events throughout the year for Pip the Pangolin and Sun Bears, such as thrift shops and bake sales, have enabled us to make significant contributions to Biodiversity Corridor and Rewilding Borneo initiatives, raising a grand sum of $2,077. Well done to us all for our continued efforts this year, and I look forward to working with you all in even more eco-packed activities next year. Thank you. Thank you. A big well done to all the students, teachers, and individuals who selflessly dedicate their time for a better tomorrow. Now, we will like to continue to the Academic Awards, which is another exciting part of the celebration of achievement. By giving out these awards, we recognize and celebrate the efforts students have been putting into their studies in and outside of the classroom. To use the motto of Eagle House, nothing is ever achieved by doing nothing. We also celebrate students' achievements as they progress on their journey through school. We will start with the Outstanding Academic Effort Awards, which are handed out by Mr. Sheehan. The Outstanding Academic Effort Awards in Year 10 go to... Jaden Jason, Chloe Young, Amira Bolkia in absentia, Caitlin Alba, Alia Ismadi. Marissa Ko, Aiden Hakim, and Maria Mazini. In year 11, the Outstanding Academic Effort Awards go to Laraski Marwa in absentia, Akshita Gopinath Lakshmi, Ellie Jackson, Megan Hallett, Melanie Poulon in absentia, Sienna Holmes, Sin Lim, and Jasmine Turton. And in year 12, the Outstanding Academic Effort Award to go to Owen Kyle, Maria Kamal Rudzaman, Shannon Lau,
Bazila Fazila. Khadija Iskandar Rizal. Marvin Santos. Ain Aji. And Yasmina Adimasadi. Congratulations to all of the winners. We heavily commend you for all of your utmost diligence in the classrooms. Next, we have the Academic Achievement Awards, dedicated to those who have shown their extraordinary academic performance. The Outstanding Academic Achievement Awards in Year 10, handed out by Mr. Sheehan, go to Rahma Isa. Joven Tang, Nigel Lim, Claire Lee, and Claudia Teo. Bertie Scott, Shasha Muhammad Adnan, Sarah Ng, Hadi Ryan Osman. and Ilyas Ilham Rohaidi. In year 11, the Outstanding Academic Achievement Awards go to Yajna Kari, Durga Mohana Krishnan, Anima Hassan, Abby Ting, Chahoy Tan. Aris Romi Irwin, Amanda Go, Clara Ang, Sana Hamid, and Nasriyah Nur Asilin. In 
In year 12, the Outstanding Academic Achievement Awards go to Giselle Ko, Hana no Shafi'i, Tammy Teo, Alvin Lim, and Nidhi Kulkarni. Oliver Chu, Hazia Handri, Chan Kyo, Anna Ho. and Alicia Abdul Rahman. Well done to the winners. As seen today, all your hard work and perseverance have definitely paid off. Now, we introduce the Academic Effort and Achievement Awards to those who have displayed the utmost diligence, strength, and buoyancy in their academics. The Outstanding Academic Effort and Achievement Awards in Year 10, handed out by Mr. Sheehan, go to Isaac Chang, Darius Barris, Shin Khan Min, Min Song Lee, Shobik Bandyo Padyai, Sai Ananya, Toby Stevens, and Donna Shanchinia. In year 11, the Outstanding Academic Effort and Achievement Awards go to Iggy Malik in Absentia, Lotam Mike Ikebudu, Marianne Sakera, Olivia Smith, Lija Chong, Nadia Mohammad Charles Nizam, Rodion in absentia, Safia Khalifa.
And in year 12, the Outstanding Academic Effort and Achievement Awards go to Speaker Lim, Zed Smith, Afik Rahman, Sin Yeo, Natalie Yip, Erilyn Tan, Yong Sin Lim, and Danish Samri. Again, a big congratulations to all the winners. May we have another round of applause. You all have shown an exceptional performance. Now we welcome Isaac and Rika to talk about Povia points. Hi everyone, I'm Rika. And I'm Isaac. Povia points are an integral part of Jerdong International School. They truly are a part of our DNA. Not only do they reward students for taking part in various activities within and beyond the classroom, they're a crucial part of saving thousands of lives worldwide by eradicating the polio disease. Polio points, polio majorly affects muscle paralysis in young children, prominently in Afghanistan and Pakistan, impacting their livelihoods forever. Polio points at GIS aims to fund the provision of polio vaccines to aid the movement of global polio eradication. One set of polio points equals one vaccine and one child saved. To be awarded polio points, students need to exhibit leadership by acting with integrity and inspiring others to be the best versions of themselves. This ties hand in hand with integration, where students are inclusive, kind, and respectful to others, staying true to our school vision of togetherness and community. Throughout the many challenges that students may face, they need to be resilient and determined to overcome challenges while being mindful of their own well-being. They need to be creative, innovative, and holistic in their thinking by reflecting critically and applying ideas from school with actions in the wider world. Confident communication with others is recognized when students go above and beyond to display their natural curiosity for knowledge. These are the six school aims that each student with this honorable award has displayed throughout this academic year, setting them up for success when they go off to university. Over the last two years, we have raised 20,000 full sets of polio points in a whole school effort resulting in 20,000 polio vaccines for those in need. While everyone in GIST has contributed to this total, the following students have distinguished themselves as individuals who, without fail, demonstrate the key qualities of leadership, resilience, integration, thinking, communication, and engagement. On this note, these students must be commended for the tremendous work they've done to help us take a step forward in eradicating polio and making GIST and the world a more positive place. Without further ado, the Polio Points Award handed out by Mr. Van der Merrill go to Toby Stevens, Jovan Tang, Drishti Punjabi in Absentia. I am Kanugo. Yasmina Adimasadi. And Alicia Abdul Rahman.
Another big well done and a thank you to all the students involved in this journey towards eradicating polio. It is inspiring to see the effort of our community in making the world a better place. Last but not least, we welcome our head boy and head girl, Zed and Chloe, to speak about the teaspoons of change. Good afternoon, everyone. Zed and I are so excited to have the pleasure of announcing the Teaspoons of Change Award. Zed, can you tell everyone a little more about what it means to make a teaspoon of change? Sure thing. Teaspoons of change are in everything we do here at GIS. It's about making small, positive changes in our day-to-day -day lives to leave a positive impact on not only our school community, but on the wider community. You don't have to change the entire world to make it a better place. It's about making lots of the right decision, which, when you add them up, will have a massive positive impact. As Zed said, teaspoons of change are in everything we do here at GIS. One key way students are recognized for their outstanding commitment to community is through our polio point scheme. Students are awarded polio points to recognize the work that they put into their academic journeys and our school environment. But teaspoons of change happen everywhere, in classrooms, at home, on the sports field, Students can make a difference anywhere they choose. As students and leaders of the future, we have a responsibility to ourselves and to each other to continue to strive for excellence and to shape an inspired tomorrow. The students that you're about to see cross the stage are exemplary when it comes to making that small change. Each one of you has displayed incredible resilience, determination, and compassion. You have demonstrated that age is not a barrier to making a difference you have proved that it only takes a small idea and the courage to act upon it to create ripples of change that reach far beyond what you could have ever imagined. Congratulations to all the students receiving the Teaspoons of Change Award today, and thank you for being the catalysts of a brighter future. I now have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Vandermeerl and Mr. Morell to hand out the awards. In year 10, the Teaspoons of Change Awards go to Wali Fakhruddin. Waki Zufadli. Isaac Chang. Ben Brown. Murtuza Ali Sheikh Mohammed. Claire Lee. Bertie Scott. And Abby Bannister. Sara Nasro Muhaimin. Hadi Ryan Osman. Farzana Faisal. Amber Go. Amira Bolkia in absentia. Shin Kant Lin. Shafika Sapi. And Grace Taylor. In year 11, the Teaspoons of Change Awards go to Sebastian Buckingham.
min ni. Claire Chong. Joey Shaw in, in absentia. Sana Hamid. William Brown in absentia. Siraj Maxim. Niha Kanan. Shifa Abu Shahmi. Arham Chugtai. Yajna Kari. William Thacker. Iman Suraini. Shasha Suhardi in absentia. And Nasriya Nor Asilin. And in year 12, the Teaspoons of Change Awards go to Carl Maxwell. Amar Amir Hamza. Amnia Malik. Nazif Nadri Radhi. Chan Cho. Callum Smith. Alwi Marjidi. and Grace Lee. Nicholas Teo. Michelle Hendricks. Sebastian Sim. Erilyn Tan. Adam Lee. Nadia Cairo. Raika Chowdhury. And Amal Azarin.
the different awards shown and the recipients on stage have clearly displayed the variety of talent and versatility that runs through our community. So again, we congratulate all the winners for their hard work and determination. We thank everyone as well for their tremendous effort and contributions into embedding positivity throughout this academic year, supporting those around them. And although this academic year has had its equal measure of challenges, the sense of overcoming and utmost resilience, as is shown today, reflects upon the true spirit and strong sense of accomplishment in the JIST community. However, this is not limited to just the award winners, but every student here. I strongly believe that each and every one of us plays a significant role, and that we all act as a puzzle piece in a much brighter and bigger image, shaping the community to what it is today. Moreover, it is also an honor to exhibit this to loved ones joining us in the audience, contributing to this event of celebration. We hope to find more students achieving excellence in the future and are excited to see what's in store for us next academic year. Thank you to all the attendees today for your interest and attention, and we wish you all a lovely evening ahead of you. I would, <laughs> I would now like to ask the parents and teachers to leave the auditorium after a round of applause. Yes, parents and teachers may now leave the auditorium.